Department of Arts, Manufactures, and Commerce that we hold our second annual conference. I do not understand how they can breathe at such heights and speeds, but visions are mere fancies. It's an organization that believes in progress and also believes that it, its role is to remove the barriers to progress, whatever those barriers might be. Um, Matthew, you're standing in front of uh, Joseph Wright's orrery, um, which is a fantastic allegory of curiosity. Um, I'm becoming more and more interested in the parallel um, of democratizing curiosity. Um, so I, I just invite you to comment about how we can overcome some of the barriers of inhibition, about just asking questions, about, about developing curiosity so that that becomes an active um, driver of social change. On this side. Yep. Uh, good morning from a blooming, bright and sunny Derby Silk Mills morning. I'm with Matthew Taylor. Good morning. Um, fab talk. Really, really enjoyed it. I felt like my internal dialogue was speaking for me. Um, I wanted to ask you a question, and just that was going through my mind is how do we readdress the word disrupt for uh, politicians and local MPs? Because they're scared to death, I think, of innovation and who the people are that get to innovate. How do, how do we approach that? How do we re-engineer the word so it's less scary? You know, I've got a very strong view on that. I think we, don't, we mustn't try and don't sell disruption, don't sell innovation. Just get people to understand the current system can work. Okay. You know, because people will talk about this stuff, but as long as they think that the old ways of doing things work, as long as they think that the kind of notion of policy pulling levers, of kind of kind of paternalistic view of how you make change happen and you do it to people and you know, wise politicians and wise managers make change and then they impose that. As long as people hold on to the notion that that works, they'll kind of condescend to you and they'll say, oh yeah, a bit of disruption, innovation, we love that. They won't actually change what they're doing. Mm. What changes in the end is, is it just runs out of road. You just think it doesn't work anymore. Like, it's just not happening. And then that's the point at which you change. So, you know, the question is, is do we, how much damage, how much failure does it have to be before our political class in particular realise that the old ways don't work? Well, uh, where's well, the starting point? Okay, yeah. so I think, so you have to start from people's sense of efficacy. When I gave the example in my speech, I remember years and years ago, my school uh, head teacher telling me that, that he'd organised on the Tuesday night at the school an event to explain the curriculum to the parents. Uh, and nobody turned up. And then two days later, the Parents Association organised an international evening, asked parents to bring along their national dish. And about 100 parents came along. They've been asked to give something, asked to do something which they thought they could do, and they didn't feel they were going to be sitting in rows being talked to. Mm. So I think apathy, generally speaking, the problem about, we think apathy is a problem about people who are apathetic. It's generally speaking about problem about what it is we ask people to do. Right. And, and our inability to start with people's own sense of what matters to them, what they care about. No, right. Matthew, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Can, it, can I get it next to this side? Yeah, yeah. Okay. about the fact that there is so many things that are broken and we need to readdress the way that we look at those things and I wanted to ask him one more question which was about class structure. Um, I'm just excited that Derby feels like it's willing to have that conversation, it's willing to allow the disruptors in, it's willing to look at the new inventors. So we won't go back in and have a, have a chat. It's awesome! I think that resonates really um, clearly to what you were talking about actually Matthew in terms of connecting that work to people, giving people, creative communities with a cause actually. So the Remake project, the painting that we've got at the back of the building is the Prospect of Derby. It actually had been titled in the auction 15 years ago or so as Unknown Midland Towns. <laughs> to offer honorary or pecuniary awards, money, cash, 
for useful inventions, discoveries, and improvements. And they called those premiums. And the first cash premium was offered to any member of the public who could grow mad. That's the plant on the left. It had never taken root in the UK because of the cooler climate. And it was an important source of red dye for the textile industry. And in fact, having to import red dye was actually holding back British textiles. The premium that was offered spurred on a generation of people looking for, for solutions to this problem. And within 20 years, Madder became a feature of the British landscape and British textiles went on to actually dominate the global market. Finally, we organised a conference at the New Art Exchange, which took place just last week. And that was a chance to talk about some of the initial research findings and to get some feedback from that. Um, we also invited along a series of mini-presenters who shared their experiences and their expertise around certain things that had been identified previously as barriers to committing social actions. So, for example, there were people talking about the ways to, to get funding or the ways to get by without very much funding. And there were people talking about how to build or how to use your social networks. And Lean, which is all about really uh, testing ideas, prototyping ideas, going out and speaking to some, some people. So I'm, uh, I'm set up my business to do with 3D printing and entrepreneurship and going to schools. And I'm on a, a program called Next Business Generation in Nottingham. And it's all about coming up with assumptions and going out and testing those assumptions before I create a website, a business card, and all that stuff. So I think education needs to change, particularly around the curriculum. So rather than start telling students to come up with a business idea, we get businesses into the classrooms and get, the, get them to set students real life business challenges that they're facing. Because then students can still use their creativity, but they're solving real business needs. <laughs> and those businesses can take those, those ideas and hopefully that'll lead to a sustainable business for themselves. <laughs> I think I think that they want to be as good as they want to be. Because I think that's just the ground for adapting. Is it about coaching? Is it about getting things to the ground together? Is it useful to actually? Absolutely, it's useful to actually. Benjamin Franklin is the right answer. Excellent. 